All right, this video right here is aimed primarily at my Programming One students. However, there may be other students out there that are doing assignments on GitHub Classroom because their teacher wants to torture. I mean, their teacher wants them to do the same stuff that I want you to do. Um, and so this is part of GitHub Classroom. And in order to participate in this, you're going to need a GitHub account. But for those who are in my class, I have a list of these math-related unit test challenges from volume of a cone calculator down to heat index calculator challenge. Now, um, as a demo, you can follow along with my volume of a cone calculator, and I will walk you through every step from the beginning to the end. And that's what this video is about, is, is how do you do this? Now, this is what I see as the teacher. You, I don't know if you see this or not. It might be public. I don't know. All right, but the point is these are individual uh, assignments that I have to give you a link for this. Before I give you the link, though, get your account on GitHub. And if you don't have one now, now's the time to do it. So I'm going to create my new account, Bob the Chicken. I don't know if it's going to like it. Of course, I'm going to have to... Wait, was that email? Right? Was that email? Hold on. Yeah, it was. Now I'll create a password. Do you see that password? I'm going to click sign up for GitHub. Problems creating your account. Bob the chicken. Oh, okay. So we got to change Bob here. Let me make it all one word. Bob the chicken. Okay. Try that again. <coughs> Hey, welcome to GitHub. Now, um, we're going to do the free one unless you want to pay $7 every month. I don't recommend it, by the way. Um, and I'm just going to click continue. So just, just do this default unlimited public repositories for free. Click continue. Now, you're going to go ahead and set up some stuff here. I'll just say somewhat experienced. I'm going to do it for school projects, project management, design, development, whatever. Um, student, hobbyist, professional. Of course, the classic line here is professional. Look. All right. I'm interested in skipping this. Okay. So now I'm going to click submit. And it looks like, dang it, I've probably connected to my other account here. Okay, someone might want a screenshot of this. Here we go. I'm signed in as Bob the Chicken. There we go. I'm Bob the Chicken. I should put a little uh, a little comb on my head, maybe a little beak. Oh, wait, there's my beak right there. Okay. All right, so I got my account. Now I'm ready. For students in my class, uh, to get the verification email, if you're using your school email account, make sure you're doing mail.hsd.k12.org.us. <laughs> Don't do the Gmail link. For whatever reason, the GitHub email, that uh, the confirmation where you verify it, is missing. And I don't know why that is, but it is. But if you just do the HSD one, um, you will have to set up the time zone. In, unless you want to be in the Azores and have all your time all messed up, I recommend you do the Pacific because that's where we are. Um, and then once you set it up, because if you're here on this computer lab, it'll just automatically sign you in. You'll see your confirmation email. So make sure you confirm it to get your account up and ready. Okay, I've just now added my new profile pic. I am now Bob the Chicken. And so I am ready to do the next step. So when you do the assignment, it's going to send you to a link. And we're going to, as practice, do vo volume of a cone calculator. And I'm going to send you this link. If you're in my class, this is the link you're going to do. Okay? And it will be on the assignment description. And if you're not in this class, well, you know, you can just pretend that you're doing this and maybe you'll find a teacher that will give you an assignment like I do. So you get a link, you follow that link, and what you're going to see is, well, whatever, it says I already accepted it. Oh, it's the wrong person, sorry. Oh, no, it changed my profile. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, 
Well, see. Oh, I know what I can do. I'll do it in another browser. How about that? Okay, so let's go ahead. I'll do it in Firefox. Get the invitation. And then here I have to sign in. Oh, I need a verified email address. So I'm going to go verify it on my email. Okay, here it is. I opened it up. I got my little invitation. I just click verify email address and I should be good. I'm going to go back here, hit refresh and see if that's working now. Not the page I'm looking for. So I got to I got to redo that link again. And at this point, I should be signed in ready to go. There we go. I got my Bob the Chicken over here. I'm going to authorize this. So you have to authorize this. And um, now I can go accept the program. So once you authorize it, then you click accept this. And then it's going to take you to the repository. And one of the things you're going to notice is you'll have this link here that has this name. And all of you are going to have a very similar link, except for the very end, it'll have your username. Because this is an individual assignment. Now, in this assignment, there's a lot of files and a lot of description, and I'm here to kind of explain what that's about. Um, Git Ignore, I'll, we'll take a look at it. Uh, sometimes these files get created if you're on a Mac or if you're building a Python program, so I just added it to Git Ignore so it wouldn't actually include those files. You can ignore Git Ignore, okay? Just leave it alone. This Travis.yml is a setup that allows it to basically automate running this test cone volume calculator.py. So you just leave that alone also. You can just leave it alone, but it tells it that it's in Python. It's going to test it Python 3.5, 3.6. If I wanted to test it in other Python versions, I could add those as well. Okay. And then we're going to install this file in this line, which is requirements. And technically, I don't actually need that file, and I forgot to pull it out from earlier. But on requirements, if you needed to upload a module like Piperclip or Pygame or whatever, you just add it right here without a comment. Okay. And then it would actually run it. That's um, Otherwise, the automation of it won't work. This readme is what you're looking at down here. Okay. In the readme file, if you look at it, when you write this uh, readme, it just shows you what it looks like on here. As a text file, it actually looks a lot different. Um, we'll take a look at raw. And this is what it looked like in raw. Okay, to zoom in on there. So you got this uh, pound sign here, and then you got this, you know, star, star, goal, star, star, underline. And then um, when it's actually executed on it, you see all this. This is your description of the assignment. So for our practice assignment, we're gonna we're gonna modify cone volume calculator to calculate the volume of a cone. And we're gonna round it to the second digit. So you're gonna need to know the, the round function. And we're going to look at the inputs so you understand what's going on. So in this case, it, it, the name of the function is right here, calculate cone volume. If you don't have that name right, it, it won't work. And it's going to receive two different inputs. Both are floats. One is base radius, one is height. Okay. So you're going to need to send it these values in the right order, base radius, then height. And then it's going to return one output, which is a float, rounded to the second digit. You need the round function. And then... Um, there's some little notes on here. And then here is the example inputs and expected output. So one way you can test it is you can give it these two inputs on the function. If it returns this value, you got it right. So this is just for your information. But these are the actual test cases I'm going to run for your calculator. And if you meet all of these, then that meant you wrote it correctly. And you've met all ex expected output with that given input. Okay. Now, let's go back to the remaining files because all that's left are the two files. Test cone volume calculator. You are going to not modify this code. You've got to leave this alone. So no changes of this unless I discover that there's a problem with a, a test case and we need to modify it in here. There shouldn't be. I think I tested them all out, but we're going to know for sure later. So don't touch this one, but this is what you run to see if it's working. And I'll explain in just a moment how to do that. 
And then finally, this is the one file you edit, and we're going to go over that in just a moment. So what you're going to do is once you're in this window here and you've got your volume of a cone calculator dash your username, okay, you're going to go to clone or download. Uh, hold on a second. The video is when you go to clone or download, you got to make sure you click clone or download and you do not download zip. This is incorrect. You want to click here to copy to clipboard. So go ahead and click that now. And now it says copied. So you have it copied. And what you're going to do is you're going to create a new folder and you're going to drop your files into that new folder. And I'll show you how. All right. So what you do is I'm just going to go to documents and create a new folder. And where you save it is not as important because you're going to have all this work saved in here. And then just call it, in this case, this is the test. Um, we'll call it test math calculator challenge, right? What you name it is just whatever is going to allow you to remember. So go ahead and create a folder now. And then we're going to use Git, which you need to have Git installed. We're going to use Git to basically bring those files in and connect to this repo. Okay, I'm assuming you have Git installed. Once you have it installed, you can right click on the folder and you're going to do git bash here. We're going to go over the bash commands. Okay, now here is git bash and you can see the repository up here. You can see all these files down there and I'm going to move this folder over here. And I just want to show you what you do. The first thing you want to do is initialize the repository. I'm going to move this close to here. Okay, to initialize the repository, you type git in it. That now makes it a tracked folder. Git is officially tracking the folder. Next, we want to uh, connect to the Git repository. So I'm going to do a git remote add origin, and then I'm going to paste what I copied. Now, before I paste it, I just want to tell you, git is always what you say if you're going to give a git command. It needs to know it's git. Remote add means we're adding a remote repository. Origin is the name of that repository. And that is common lingo. This is what we say when we're referring to the online repo. This, the online repo is the official, um, official one, official um, repository for your work. And then you're going to right click and paste or do shift insert. And you're going to put in that link that you copied. Okay. And then you're going to hit enter. Now, nothing should happen. If you go open the folder, you're not going to see anything, right? Except for maybe this little git file, git folder here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to do a git pull. You're going to pull from the origin to the master. That's git pull origin master. Hit enter. Bam. Take a look. On the right, you've got all your files, and you're ready to begin. All right, for those of you having a hard time to see, look what I did. I just, boom, I blew that thing up. So now you can see what happened. By the way, the git init and the git remote add origin is a one-time deal um, for connecting, for, for tracking a folder on git init and connecting to an online repository. That's how you do it. Now, the git pull origin master is a command you're, you may or may not do. You would definitely do it if you are working on different computers. Let's say you're at school, so you work at school, but then you go home, and if you're at home, and you want to work on this, you can just create your own folder at home. And as long as you have Git installed, you would just create a folder. You would do the Git in it. You do the Git remote add origin, just like you did here. You do a Git pull origin master. And once you do that, you'll now have another copy of the same repository at your home. And then you have one at school. And then if, you know, the school like had this huge blackout and all the servers caught on fire, and hail and stuff just rained down, um, you would still have a copy at home and there's still the copy at Git. So it's kind of nice. And so you can work in different areas. But then if you're working at home and you do some stuff and you're back at school and you need to get those changes, you would get the changes doing this exact same command. That would be providing the online repository has what you have. Now, I would love to get working on this code right now, but honestly, we've run low on time. I'm going to make this second half be on the next video, so stay tuned for that one. I'll be posting it pretty much as soon as I'm done posting this one. All right, so uh, stay tuned for that. <laughs>